Now we have to ask a more fundamental question. What is the purpose of life? And the purpose of life for us is that we worship God, that we submit to God and so on. You see? Because when you have a meaning in life, as Nietzsche said, if you have a why, almost any how is possible. Like what really will motivate a woman or a man? What, let me ask you two questions. What, would, what is most likely to motivate a man to extract from his own resources so that he can upkeep his family, his children, rear his kids or whatever, even though that's against his economic interests? Likewise, what is most likely to, to make a woman obedient to a husband? Obedient to him, it's a very strong word in this managerial hierarchy. Acceptance of these things that even if it causes some level of insecurity or discomfort. I would say it has to be something which goes above and beyond the core of, okay, this is, I'm doing this for myself, it's in my best interest. It has to be, yes, it is in your best interest, but there's a transcendental idea which is what? Which is a godly one. This is a metaphysic, you know, and it gives, it, it gives a whole gender discussion meaning. Which is why I'll be honest with you, Despite the fact that we also suffer from gender egoists from both sides of the Muslim world, Muslim feminists or those who are influenced by them and men that are too gender egoistic on their side as well. I feel like of all the religions in the world, maybe with the exception of Judaism as well, Islam and Orthodox Judaism has been able to keep the, new, the, the idea and the sacredity of the nuclear family intact. And there's a reason for that. And even Tomasi actually agrees with that. He mentioned he mentions that in his book to be fair to him yeah and so what i'm saying is the, the way forward you're never gonna what i'm gonna say is you're less likely to convince a man to extract his resources and sacrifice his life or a woman to obey a man if there isn't a, a, a overarching idea which is that you're doing it for the sake of god is that as part of your purpose of life and so on that has consistently been shown to, to be the case so i think there's a major disadvantage in trying to implement the most efficient types of family restructuring on a secular paradigm. I think that the religious paradigm is infinitely more powerful in being able to do so. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. I mean, I think one thing I have realized is that I think, I guess it kind of speaks out to kind of the rest of the world, where it's kind of like, I think the most secularized, secularized people, I think are often the ones that have kind of faced religion at the most extreme level. And that's why, to the point that it kind of harms them mentally. So that's why they end up going secular. I understand, but all the evidence about religion and, and human contentment is against the thesis that you just mentioned. For example, Pew Research have done a, a study on human happiness. Yeah. And they said that the people that are most religious are actually the most happy. Right, yeah. There is a research on that. Hmm. Yes, it's, it's, and Pew Research is seen as like the gold standard. What about in like Sweden? 2019. What about in Sweden where they say like, Religion is like dropping quite rapidly, but general society is like really, really quite happy. No, no, general society is not happy in Sweden. I, I, I feel like Sweden, first of all, has the highest level of suicide in the world, especially male suicide, which we were talking about. Yeah. I mean, I mean quite, be honest, I'm, I'm saying like, put the sociological studies to the side. Go to Sweden, go to, no, no, I'm, I'm saying go to, go to Sweden, and then go to any place you like in Africa, any place you like. Any place you like in the whole of the Middle East. Just look at the people's faces. I feel like there's like... No, I'm being serious. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I know this sounds like a superficial remark. If you go to... I've been to Sweden many times. I've been to Norway many times, yeah? When you go to Scandinavia, I go to Scandinavia. I'm saying that, yes, the studies have shown. Like, for example, Forbes magazine have said this. The World Health Organization have said this. The highest level of depression are in countries like Sweden, yeah? And the United States of America. So the studies are there, but I'm just saying from a human... But if you've traveled, you go to Sweden, you go to Norway, Look at the people, just look at the people. Look how they interact with each other. Look at how they look in the streets. Look at their disposition and their temperament. Then go to, I'm from Alexandria in Egypt, yeah? Originally, that's where I'm from, yeah? Go to Alexandria. People are a bit complaining about the economic situation, yeah? But they're not like the people in Sweden. I, I, I promise you that. I went to Norway. And what do you think? I thought they were brilliant. I looked around. They're brilliant. I'm, I'm not saying they're not brilliant, but they're not happy. I'm saying that happiness is a, People confuse the Human Development Index, which is um, it's an economic, th it's a, it's yeah, an economic thing, the other yeah, with, with human happiness. That's the first thing. The second there thing is... is a metric that measures quality of life within society. Like that. That, that is that. It's called the Human Development Index. Oh, okay. Well, then I must have been looking at another one. There's a few the, different the, kind of the Human Development Index, it, it puts together life expectancy, GDP per capita, and um, educational levels and a few other things. I feel like there are like many, every country, a lot of countries have their own version of what freedom is. 
So like, I guess Sweden views it as like very liberal, but then there's another type of freedom in America, where it's kind of like their freedom, where like people are really crazy. But then, yeah, yeah, I get and, you. And then, and then there's also Japan, well, America's like, America's comparative comparatively to Sweden, a very religious country, especially the Bible Belt. There's a lot of religion going on there. What I'm saying is that if you, the issue is this. First and foremost, I feel like there's a hidden presupposition. In my view, the purpose of life is not actually to be happy. And in fact, you know, it's not actually to be happy. And in fact, I think physio physiologically or psychologically, being happy all the time is not actually a good state to be in. Because if you think about it, from a, even from a, from a biological perspective, yeah, imagine having, when you're happy, your dopamine goes up, right? Or serotonin or neurotransmitters go up. But the, the more euphoric you are, the more, the more you crash, like, in fact. So being at a, a, a physiological, psychological state of euphoria or happiness or ecstasy all the time is not actually... So the Quran actually tells us what the, from our perspective, the best state to be in as a stable is not happiness, but is in fact tranquility. That's why the Quran states, for example, right? الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَ إِنُّوا قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ I'll, 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 I'll translate. أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَ إِنُّوا قُلُوبُ So basically it says that the ones who believe and their hearts find tranquility in the remembrance of God, that surely with the remembrance of God do hearts find tranquility. So in other words, the best static state to have from an Islamic perspective or from a human perspective, or at least what the prescription of the Quran is that, is one of tranquility. If you have peaks of, uh, for example, ecstasy or euphoria, that's okay. But if, you, if it's too often, it will crash you. It, it will, you will not be in a positive mind frame, you see? So we, for, for us, we don't believe that happiness is where you should be going anyway. Tranquility is where you should be. Would you say there's a difference between being happy and doing something right? Is what you're trying to say. What I'm saying is that being happy is not always a good thing to be. Yeah. Sometimes it's okay not to be happy. So long as you're tranquil, the best life, if you were to tell me, look, for the next two months, what state do you want to be in? I will say I want to be in a tranquil state. If I say I want to be in, an, I want to be in a euphoric state, then I, I know for a fact, and any drug user will know this, including yourself. <laughs> yeah? I'm not, I'm not going to... I know him from before. Any drug user will know this, that when you take drugs, if you take opioids, which I did take, but as a prescription drug, <laughs> when I had an injury, I had to take heavy loads of opi op opioids, which is like tramadol and morphines and stuff like that. And it gives you a bit of a kick. But then what you realize is that it gives you a major crash as well. As uh, Van der Kolk, he wrote a book called The Body Keeps Score. Just know that if you're feeling ecstatic at any moment, that there's going to come a time where that is going to be repaid in either depression or sadness or low mood. So for me, the best being ecstatic once in a while, twice, three times is okay. But being excited all the time ain't what, what I want to be anyway. I don't want to be happy all the time. I want to be tranquil all the time. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So what I'm saying is, the question now is, if, if, the, if the physiological or psychological state of human being, which is optimal, is a tranquil one, yeah, how does one attain that? So the Quranic message is saying that the way to attain that is through remembrance of God. So, so let, me, let me explain how. Let me, let me explain how. Let me, let, me, let me explain. The Quran states the following, yeah, the Quran, honestly, says in the insana khulika halua that certainly the human being is being created in a state of anxiety that the human being is fundamentally anxious if if evil befalls him then he's in a panicked state and if he, and if good comes to him then he's very preventative so the original uh, physiological or psychological state of the human being is one of uh, anxiety of panic and of stinginess. And then it says, Illa al Except for those who are The ones who are consistent upon their prayers. And then it gives like eight different uh, characteristics. What are these characteristics? All of these characteristics relate to a metaphysical meaning. Something bigger than the human beings himself. As I said, as Nietzsche said, if you have a why, almost any how is possible. Yeah? If you have a meaning of life and a purpose of life, then you can get through pain. Like for example, you look like you're going to the gym or doing some stuff, yeah? You don't look like that. No, I'm joking. <laughs> okay, I'm, okay. I'm only kidding. But when you go to the gym, if like, let me put it into a human example, yeah? If someone goes to the gym and does like bench press and all these kind of things, right? Really and truly, effectively, they're causing micro tears in their muscle, right? But in so doing, they're in their mind, they're doing it for a purpose which is bigger than that, which is what? 
so that they can grow their muscles and whatever, right? Are you with me? Yeah, All right, so, so something which would effectively be painful in one, se in one sense has been transformed to something which is, in, 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 in any event, enjoyable maybe, which is worthwhile or something like that. Why? It's been transformed like that because of perception. So perception and teleos or purpose or meaning transforms a fundamentally painful thing into something which is fundamentally bearable or fundamentally even enjoyable. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's why there was a guy that wrote, his, his name was... Um, Victor Frankl, who wrote a book called The Meaning of Life, or uh, Meanings of Life, like, he was a Holocaust victim, yeah? But he was a survivor. And he invented something Search called... For the Search for the Meaning of Life. Yeah, he invented something called Logotherapy. Because he, he, he basically said this, that what differentiated the victims of the Holocaust that could bear the pain, the pain and punishment from those who couldn't is the fact that they were praying and that they were creating meaning out of it and narrative out of it and whatever. So Logotherapy is actually... He, he differentiates it because he says, and he quotes Nietzsche as well, this, this quote that I said. He differentiates it by saying that if you create meaning and purpose yeah, in someone's life, then it's, it's one of the most thera therapeutically uh, effective methods. Going back to religion, and he, effect, he specifically even says religion is one of the best ways of doing that. So going back to what I'm saying now, yeah? <laughs> it's it's yeah, go, go, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. there is psychological backing yeah, for what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that if you create meaning, in situations which would otherwise be negative, okay, or would, would induce a pessimistic reaction for a human being, then that is the most, it's a surefire way of alleviating that pain or even reconceptualizing or reformulating it in one's mind. That's why there's a, there's a hadith of the Prophet, there's a, you know, Prophet Muhammad, he said something. He said, li amr al He said, wondrous is the affair of the believer. Inna amrahu kullahu lahu khayrun. That all of his affair is good. And this ain't the case for anyone except for a believer. If good things happen to him, he's thankful. And if bad things happen to him, he is, he's patient and thankful. Meaning what? Meaning that you can never really attain this high level of meaning unless you have a metaphysic, a religious metaphysic, which will allow you to think of the bigger picture. There's nothing material here like, I'll be honest with you, when people die for their country, or die for the queen, or die for whoever, whomever, yeah? I'll be honest, I feel like that is, for me, it's not a compelling enough reason to fight or die. Because why should I die for another human being, whomever they are? Why should I die for another human being, whomever they are? Yeah? Unless it's maybe you can argue a child that I'm trying to protect and whatever. But really and truly, why should I? Yeah? Why should I? But if it, no, 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 honestly, am I right? Well, would you unless, die for your country? If, unless, would you die? Unless if you love that person. No, you know yeah, no, but I'm just saying that dying for one's country is a nonsensical proposition for me. What, what, the flag is not going to come to me in my grave and tell me, well done, you have done your job. You know, the Union Jack is not going to accompany me when I'm in the, you know, it's not. That's the thing, you injected the word religious meaning story, you know, you put the, but like I've got a story about veganism, which, and I've got like a meta moral idea that says don't cause suffering to un when you don't need to, and so I undergo the suffering of um, being vegan and whatever difficulty comes up with that, but I do it for the larger cause of saving animals. Yeah, and that's, and that's going to help you more than, uh, than if, you, if you didn't have that cause. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not denying that, but I'm saying that there's a higher level one. Yeah, Which is, yeah. the religious one is like, oh, there's an eschaton, there's an afterlife, there's a bigger picture, you cannot compete with that. Yeah, I'm so saying, yeah. I think one of my stories would be, there is something that has like to be moral, to be good, there are good actions and bad actions. I want to do good actions and consider myself Fine. moral. Fine. So that transcends, that is my driving thing. Yeah. So, so I'm just trying to push back against the idea yeah, yeah. that you need to inject, only religion can give you these... I didn't say only, no, no, no. So, certainly, that's not my point. Yeah. I'm saying any metaphysic which is transcendental has the potential to do that. Yeah. But I feel like religion is, is particularly effective. Why? Because religion, religion gives you a promise of an eschaton, of an afterlife. Yeah. But yeah. No, no. But no, seriously, like, if you, like, let me ask you a question. Let me, let me ask you a question. If you actually, it's conditional. If you actually believed, if you actually believed, like with the way that you believe that I'm speaking to you right now, yeah, that you exist, that if you die that there's going to be heaven and hell, that they exist, yeah? That there is such a, no, but if, I, I know you don't believe no, it. No, I'm not, I'm not in a But just put yourself, no, no, put yourself in my, put yourself in my position for a second. If you actually believe that, yeah. 
and that there will be an everlasting gardens and this and that and you believe in all that stuff right. you believe in the the honey and the perfect there's no the, you believe in virgins all of in it as well or something. virgins all yeah. of these things yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, all of the things you like yeah and <laughs> i like and every every man likes except for the homosexuals yeah yeah, yeah I mean, uh, uh, homosexuals might not like virgin women right no, no probably not. but yeah what i'm saying is if you actually believed that all of these things yeah my question is would this act as an incentive for you or not um, if I actually believed it, yeah, I would be like, well, actually, it's difficult to say because I'm not very like goal oriented. But obviously, you're saying like this is the greatest reward you could ever get. So would you walk towards the greatest reward? Yeah, probably. But, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, but this is how this motivated. Very much but do you know how brave that would make you? Like, like, I'm telling you, this is this is the real, forget about red pill and, and, and blue pill. I'm saying the magic pill right now because, not honestly, not genuinely. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, like right now, if you knew. That if you were walking the street, yeah, you saw someone get attacked and knife and this and that. What would if I was an atheist, if I was a secularist, I'll be honest with you. I I, no, I'll, be, I'll, be on, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest. If I saw if I was walking around here right now, yeah, and I saw somebody getting stabbed or something, or getting uh, uh, beaten up, and I think to myself, if I get there, I could get beaten up as well. If I, I see a woman getting raped, stranger rape, which is the highest here according to the WHO report, highest in the Western world. Where? In the UK? In London? No, in the Western world, in general. Where? Uh, in the Western world, that's what oh, they said. Oh, it's happening in the yeah, Western world. Yeah, stranger, okay. yeah, according. What I'm saying is, imagine if I am walking and I'm seeing that, yeah? If I'm an atheist, egoist, because that's what we fundamentally are, psychologically, I would think to myself, why am I going to put myself in danger for this other woman? I don't know her. I am going to think that. But as a Muslim, what I'm thinking to myself is this. I'm thinking, wait a minute, if I go and save this woman, no, I'm being serious. That's not the way your mind. No, but no, wallahi, it does. It does work like that. No, it does. No, I'm, I'm telling. I know, but what I'm saying is, how, this is how a, a, a person should like think. Yeah. This is how you like. Yeah. No, I, I think. Okay, but if I get involved in this thing, yeah, yeah I get. I, I try and stop this, and I get stabbed and killed. Yeah. But then the Prophet sallam, he said that whoever was killed, trying to the, the defend him, his life is a, is a martyr. Yeah, resurrected, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah all that. that. No, but if you place. actually believe in that, yeah, yeah. imagine that now. Yeah, imagine I actually believe in that. Right? So if I believe in it, they talk about the noble lie, don't they? You talk about that. Isn't it just like that? No, it's not because we are talking about something which we believe is not a lie, right? That's the, that's the difference. Yeah, but the noble yeah. lie is just tell a lie to someone; it makes them do good stuff. Yeah, is but we'd have to that? we'd have to establish whether it's a lie or not, and that's a different discussion. I'm just talking yeah. about a psychological thing. We don't want to yeah, go into yeah, different yeah. discussions here. I'm saying that on a psychological front, that would make me more brave. Yeah. Because I feel like, okay, I'll put my life on the line. I'll do it. No also, problem. If you, if you give someone like a, a tremendous uh, thing like that, doesn't it just also cause fanaticism? It can do. No, no, it can. Very, like, no, it can do. Uh, that's why. Single mindedly. No, of course, it, there's fanatics, yeah? yeah. So that's maybe what I'm it's saying. not the best. Maybe, no, no, maybe the best is like <laughs> a, a cold dispossessed. Like we'll, we'll weigh it all up and right. see. Maybe we can work out what's good about it. You know? Right, right. I understand that there are fanat there's a problem with fanaticism, yeah? I'm not, I'm not denying that. And they use the same bravery as, as the ones that are. Are doing noble things with yeah, you, right? Yeah, yeah, but we're what, just weighing up. No, 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 yeah, uh, agreed. But there's when we're saying that if people truly embodied the Islamic spirit, yeah, if they truly embodied, which is not, I would I would argue, is not the fanatic uh, yeah. interpretation. That's yeah. my interpretation. I think that's that's a false interpretation. If they truly embodied the Islamic spirit, and ask yourself a question. What we're seeing here in terms of diffusion of responsibility, yeah? We are seeing something in psychology referred to as diffusion of responsibility. Someone gets beaten up, everyone's just pulling out their phone and checking that. If you go to, you know, honestly, go to, but what, actually, what go, to go to any African country yeah. of your choosing. Any of your choosing, yeah? Okay, yeah? Go to any country which is so-called low LEDC, yeah? That's an unthinkable thing. Like people are fighting in the street and you just like, no, no, no. They get involved and try and stop it and stuff. But hey, people don't do that. That's why you have 50,000 people, according to the, the uh, what do you call it, Met Police. Yeah, not Met Police, uh, the official government statistics. 50,000 people a year being stabbed in the UK. 50,000. 50,000. Do you know why people are getting stabbed like that? Because the police, sorry, the police are cowards. They do tactical retreat. They're, they're scared to engage with the knife fighters. And also the uh, public are cowardly. If, if they were living in a country where actually bring out a knife and the whole community will come out against you and, and, and deal with you because there's a communitarian spirit, we would not find there are levels of knife crime in the UK being that level. Compare, once again, I, this might be a big claim, but I, I'm making it, yeah? Compare the levels of knife crime in the UK with any Middle Eastern country of your choosing, including Syria. 
including Syria. I promise, I promise you there is more knife crime in London than there is in Syria. I promise you. The, the war zones, even, even in the war zones, there's more than that. I promise you there is. Even during... ISIS no, 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 not during actual like, you know, whatever, but because there's gun crime there. Anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but no, I promise you, go to anywhere you like, the knife crime we're finding in the UK is, yeah. it beats almost any country in the world. It's up there. Why are people, because they don't have regard for human life. People are cowardly to get involved. The police are cowards. The, the community is a coward because they have this egoistic individualism. That's the reason why the people are cowardly like that. You go to uh, Nigeria, uh, there's knife crime, knife crime there. But it's not on the level. Uh, Ghana, it's not on the level. Sorry to say, go to any African country of your choosing. It is not on the level of the UK. And there's a reason for that. So you're saying, you're saying, um, because uh, these Middle Eastern countries have this uh, religious meta story, that it makes, doesn't make them egotistic or it makes them more committed. No, I'm saying, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, yeah. second thing is, knife crime is yeah. the only way. Oh, so, like, sorry, do you, do you, want, think, you want to say something here? Yeah. I think in other yeah. countries, they there are other ways to kill people besides stabbing yeah. so like i guess you have shootings yeah i know but i'm saying to you it's not it's not on the level i'm telling you even that it's not on the level like for example go to anywhere in latin america compare it with anywhere in the middle east okay let me ask you a question what's what is more likely to be a dangerous place for you to go any yeah anywhere in the middle east let's let's exclude the war zones let's exclude them yemen and, and, and syria let's exclude them and and Pal occupy Pal let's exclude those three places yeah and Libya, which is like four of <laughs> But war zones are war zones, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, anywhere in the Middle East you like. Where I'm from, Egypt, yeah? Ex go, compare Egypt with Mexico. Which is more a safe place to go? If you walk, if you walk in the street, and anywhere in Mex Mexico City, what is more safe for you to walk in the street there or in Egypt? In Cairo. Well, good question. That's a good question. Well, they're both two different countries. I mean, yeah. Egypt has like stricter laws, whilst Mexico's kind of dangerous for a different reason. I understand, but if, I promise you, you would not be saying that if you went to both countries, because according, it's a good comparison. Mexico City no, versus Cairo. That's a good question. Right. Good question. Mexico City got 20 million people. Yeah. yeah. Cairo's got 20 million people. Same number. Yeah. In fact, in the ranking, it's like five and six. Like the sixth most populated country uh, city in the world is Cairo. That's double the population of London, by the way. Cairo's got double the population of London, yeah? Okay. I just, no, I'm just giving you, a, giving you an understanding. Yeah. Now, if you go Cairo, yeah. with all of its problems, there are lots of problems. I'm not saying nothing. Yeah. But what I'm saying is compare Cairo with Mexico City. Yeah. In terms of knife violence and gun violence, there is no comparison whatsoever. I promise you, there's no comparison. I mean, Compare Cairo with London, there's no comparison. I mean, Even though, the, I'm, I'm telling you by head, or people getting stabbed, or shot, or you killed. Said safe, safe, you're saying safety. Thing is Anything that can cause harm. Why is it not happening like that? The, no, the, no, I don't know. I don't you get it? It's a good question. I'll have to look at it. The reason, yeah, the reason, you got to look at individualism as an ideology. Well, you kind of, yeah, so the idea that you, know, you have family, you have collect, uh, community, that, that does actually have a part to play here. And I feel like we're... You're saying they don't have family and community in Mexico? No, no, no. no. In Mexico, it's more of an individual, it's, it's a liberal culture now. Mexico. It's a liberal culture. Mexico is more dangerous because of drug trafficking. Yeah, why? Do, yeah, exactly. Drugs, drugs, drugs. Nothing to do with religion. It does because drugs, drugs are not allowed in the religion of Islam. Well, they're not in Christianity. I don't know what the conversation. I understand, is. but what we're saying is that they're not acting on a Christian impetus. They are acting. First of all, Christianity doesn't have any strict rules against drugs like Islam does. Yeah. Secondly, in, in, in Latin America, they've absorbed Western liberalism. So yeah. what, what I'm saying is that the, the individualistic liberal f flair. Look at Chicago. Ch look at Chicago. Like Chicago. But what if you do the opposite thing? Where is the safest place in the world, and is it a liberal democracy? Where is it? Tell me where's no, the no, safest no, place. I'm saying, if you look at the whole world, oh, if we, right, right. How, about, how about this? How about a place like Norway? That's clearly atheistic country. I don't know what this, uh, but I think it's the, the crime stats are quite high there as well. You'd be surprised. Norway. Yeah, I yeah. Don't know anyone the, uh, first of all, Norway six million or seven million people. Yeah. So they've got a sparse population. The, the, the population of Norway is very is spread out. What about somewhere like Japan? What about Japan? Yeah, maybe, maybe walking along the streets of Japan is the safest place. No, but okay. In terms of safety, I feel like they do have a collectivist spirit. Yeah, in, in Japan. However, I remember watching a documentary some years ago called Mega Cities. Uh, it was put by Andrew Ma. Yeah, he actually went to Tokyo. Do you remember this? Yeah, he went to he went to he, he went to. Um, he went to uh, Tokyo, and then he went to Dhaka. He went to many different megacities. He went to Cairo as well, I think, yeah? 
the cities that are like of a certain population. When he went to Tokyo, it's, the, it's number one in terms of, it's 37 million people, yeah? Big. 37.5 million according to the last stats. Now, if we're saying that Tokyo, when he went there and he saw how people were living, where now you have a different kind of issue, loneliness. People are renting friends. Yeah, but you're changing the topic, aren't you? No, 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 I've got we're, you. We're evaluating it on a certain stat. No, no, no. It, in, terms of, in terms of Japan, my argument would be that the culture is not fully liberal, that they're incentivized by different kinds of culture there. Because they have, we talk about liberal countries, yeah? The culture in, in, in Japan is not fully liberal. Then I would say, actually, look at the look at the crime stats in, in Japan. Look at them. I have a look. I have a look at them. Let's look, let's look at them. And then number two, they have different kinds of facilities as well. Because if you talk about 37.5 million people in one city, and then most people live in skyscrapers in individual flats, and they don't have the same potential to create ghettos and stuff like that. So there are lots of considerations that one can make. But once again, I'll be honest with you, I haven't looked at the crime stats in Japan. And nor have I, nor have I gone to that culture or that people. But I do think they have a communitarian spirit there. Which is why they, which is why they have things like, you know, have you, have you lived in Japan as well? So maybe you can tell us, what do you think? What's the crime like there? It's very low. Is it low? Yeah. Um, petty crime is very Why do you think the reason is? Organized crime is very high. Is it? Organized crime. Petty crime, and you can, you can leave that kill. Now, what about stabbings and, and killings no, and stuff? No, no, is no. it low? I've left my MacBook like in a cafe for hours and come And why do you think that is then? What's your, what's your, what's your, what's your reasoning behind it? Well, I, th I think what you mentioned earlier is quite interesting because there is a collectivist culture. So if one person does one thing against the stream of the sort of community consciousness, yeah, yeah. they get extremely um, ostracized. Yeah, so do you think that, okay, so, so he's confirmed what I was already thinking, which is, and that's why they have a strong like um, culture of like, suicide and stuff like that, if, if you've shamed the family. I remember reading a story, yeah, reading a story of a man who left his family, because he, he, he was in a house, yeah, and he left in, in Japan and Tokyo. He left his house because he could no longer provide for them. He thought he was useless, so he said, yeah, I'm leaving. That happens. Yeah, so the point is, is that there's a strong sense of honor, collective community honor there in Japan. I'm not saying Islam is the only solution, by the way. I, what my, my thesis is as follows is that when you have a strong individualism, okay, and you compare it to more collectivistic cultures, then the, the individualistic cultures are more likely to be high in crime than the, 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 um, than the collectivistic ones. That's my, that's my idea. Because if you go to a Christian community in Africa, that's why I said any country in Africa. If you go to a country which is majority Africa, uh, Christian in Africa, but they are all, uh, what do you call it, have a strong community or tribal allegiance, then it will be the tribal fathers that will come in and so on. Chief Masters or whatever.